Call us meeting to order. Tonight we're going to be led in the pledge by Mr. Shane Morgan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I'd like to welcome everybody to this uh, work session. Tonight, uh, we're going to, I don't think, uh, we're going to skip those. Does anybody have any questions on the agenda or consent agenda before we move on? We're going to go to number 10, Mr. Odom, and I think you're going to work Mr. Morgan in. All right. Here. Yeah. Under old business, if you remember, you received a proposal for our building program two, five years after it goes out to five. And there were some questions asked last time about what parts of the county were showing growth. Uh, and so Mr. Morgan has collected some of that data for you and will be sharing that, <coughs> that with you this evening. I think you have copies on your, on your desk. It will be, it will be these. You know, this little the colored map. What are you be sharing with you? Go ahead. After uh, speaking with uh, the different planners from uh, various cities and our county, um, the data was collected in this usable format from both uh, Rutherford County and the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, when Mr. Odom had first approached me and asked me to get some data that you had requested, um, it is kind of hard to put together, especially on the fly like this, um, that kind of inf the kind of information that would indicate um, exactly uh, where parcels are available for sale, exactly what the inventory is at the moment. Um, I can get it for you. It just takes an extended period of time working with various departments uh, in our county. The next best thing was to show you the trend or where data had or where lots had sold and permits had been issued, um, especially in single family dwellings over the course of the last several years. So what I've given you here is four years worth of history and you can it's represented in two ways. Um, by year, uh, 2010 to 2013, it's current as of uh, the eight, 17th of the month. Um, and it goes back to January 1st, 2010 for each one of those maps. Um, and you can also see a point layer on the map that kind of gives you an idea of where the cluster of those sales might have been, or permits, not sales. The third document that I presented to you right before the meeting was a spreadsheet that basically showed you um, the growth taken from our ADM reports from the first month of 2000, the 2010-2011 school year uh, all the way through the third month of this current school year. And based on, and I just kind of highlighted the middle schools just to give you an idea of where we were growing, but based on those numbers from the first month of 2010 to the first month of 2012, um, you can get an idea of what our growth has been in different, at the school level. This may be one of those things that you just need to take and study a while and look at it to kind of see. But typically where you see um, clusters in the city right outside of that in the county property on the other map, you see similar numbers or you see where it's spreading in the same direction. That's kind of lots of times based on infrastructure that's, that's moving in that particular direction. I guess a question I'd have, Mr. Morgan, I know, I know you probably can't pull it right, aw right away, but uh, on Rockville Middle, where you get 25% increase on that? Yes, sir. Uh, and this, 
based on your figures here, uh, what area is that exactly? Uh, do you know? Uh, no, sir, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know without looking more in depth. This literally was taken from our, our state reporting. Um, okay. I, I didn't look at a, a map in particular to get these numbers. Okay. That's interesting when you look at it, you see in the city there coming out to Veterans Parkway, you see over those four years, 260 plots. And you come there and match that with your county, and you see another 234 plots. So you're looking at 494 actually plots or, or houses there in, in those four years. One thing, too, is it, kind of to highlight what Mr. Odom was saying, if you were to kind of compare the two maps, you know, road for road, you can kind of see where some of that growth has been. I could essentially provide you another map that was color-coded by year that would give you an idea of, of how that growth took place. <clears throat> I guess most of your growth is probably in the last year or two, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, and, and if you look, you're going to see a lot of it's gone right down Veterans Parkway. Or very close to. Can we share any type of opinion about the nature of that growth? Is it... Uh, I mean, this is single-family dwellings, but do we have the apartment density uh, growth that we've talked about in addition to this, or is this, or is that somehow represented? No, it, it isn't. These are literally single-family dwellings. I am working on the the uh, multifamily dwellings and um, industrial, commercial. Uh, I'll be putting all of it together, but it was important to to put this together for you right away. Sure. As far as all these, <clears throat> the different municipalities and entities you're working with, do they have their own projections, what they think is coming? I actually have been in conversation with them. Um, we haven't come to a definitive answer. Uh, I know that the town of Smyrna, for example, just finished a uh, five-year growth plan, and I'm working with Mr. Goodrow and Mr. Uh, um, I'm okay. trying to think the planner's name would just escape me and I know it starts at uh, Rigsby. Rigsby thank you yeah. I'm working with Mr. Rigsby as well trying to find out what they're doing they seem to be on a very fast track for growth okay. especially in the multi-family as we dealt with with Stewart's Creek opening anybody else All right. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. You're welcome. Uh, 11. 11 is the Local Education Agency LEA Compliance Report Form. Uh, local education agencies are required to comply with all state education laws and state board of education rules. The annual LEA Compliance Report Form, due on December 15th, should state deficiency and deficiencies and a compliance plan for each deficiency. The Commissioner of Education will not grant approval to LEAs that are not in compliance with state education laws and rules that have no Tennessee Department of Education approved plan for compliance. Every school in Rutherford County has reviewed the compliance report form, including state rules and regulations. The 2013 LEA compliance report shows there are no deficiencies for Rutherford County. The motion will be recommended approval motion to submit the 2013 LEA compliance report showing no deficiencies for Rutherford County. And this has been in business, as long as I can remember, it's like how many students you have and how many drinking fountains in your, in your building. Um, do you acknowledge certain holidays that are prescribed by law and that sort of thing? So um, it's a multi-line document that's somewhere down the line. They've, there's a state law or something that says schools must include or must have this. And so that's what principals have to go and look at it for their building and then report back to us any deficiencies. Any questions? Number 12. 
Number 12, we're into facilities, and um, A is bid number 3029, Smyrna Primary School Edition and Renovation. Five bids were turned in on August 27, 2013 for the Smyrna Primary School Edition and Renovation. Liberty Construction Company was the overall lowest and best bid. Recommend approval, motion to approve Liberty Construction Company for their overall lowest and best bid of $2,266,000. $500 for the Smyrna Primary School addition and renovation. And Mr. Clark didn't even check to ask a new company for us, basically, but he's done some research on that. That's what I was going to ask. I, I don't remember us having any kind of track record <coughs> with this with this company. They don't. They've done several <coughs> buildings. Uh, they were from Franklin. And uh, one of the main sources of their business is they're also electrical contractors. When will that actually start? Yeah. Um, just uh, in December, uh, probably about the second week in December. Actually, we're in the process right now of uh, rounding up the stuff and everything to relocate the portable. So once we get that done, we'll get them in there and get them digging. Anybody else? B. B is walking tracks for various schools. Several schools have requested and received previous concrete walking tracks through funds raised by Jenna Stitzel, Coordinated School Health Coordinator. There are still many schools and Jenna is working on to fund these walking tracks. Among these schools are Christiana Elementary, John Coleman Elementary, Kittrell Elementary, Las Casas Elementary, Rockvale Elementary, Roy Waldron Elementary, Smyrna Primary, Stewartsburg Elementary, Thurman Francis Arts Academy and Walter Hill Elementary. Letters requesting permission from principals of these schools and sketches of proposed track locations prepared by the Engineering and Construction <coughs> Department are presented. Jenna plans to construct these tracks as the funds become available with supervision from the Engineering and Construction Department. Individual bids will be presented to the board in future consent agendas for approval. In other words, as she gets the funding, it's going to come back to you with the design, what we're talking about. So the motion is to approve construction of pervious concrete walking tracks at Christiana, John Coleman, Kittrell, Las Cassis, Rockvale Elementary, Royal Waldron, Smyrna Primary, Stewartsboro, Thurman Francis Arts Academy, and Walter Hill Elementary, as presented. Any comments? Questions? All right, Mr. Oden. Uh, 13. 13 is our new and revised policies on the first reading. That's some of the ones we worked on the last policy committee. The first one is policy 3.208, facilities planning, and we propose adoption of district required by federal regulations to implement a policy regarding facilities management and asbestos plan management. Part of this even included some of our energy saving, if you remember. Policy 4.606, graduation. Proposed uh, revision, district required by state regulation to have a policy regarding recognition for students who graduate with distinction and state honors. We actually did recognize those students last year, but we didn't have it in our policy, so we need to go ahead and put it in our policy to cover that. And policy 1.404, appeals to and appearances <coughs> before the board. Purpose of the revision, to limit visitor presentations to three minutes and prohibit visitors from making personal attacks against board members or school system personnel. Policy 1.803, tobacco-free schools. Purpose of this revision is to add electronic cigarettes and vaporizers to the list of prohibited items. And um, Ms. McLeod was with the high school principals today. They were glad to see this. Uh, they're already beginning to try to take them up. I just didn't know those things cost that much. I, I just didn't have an idea. They had one cigarette there was, what, $100? One of them had today. Really? Um, you know, so it's a, it's a very expensive uh, <laughs> thing for people. So I don't know. But the high school principals were made aware of it. were certainly in consent for us doing this. 
policy 1.704 charter schools purpose of revision to add the following requirements to the application process. Compliance with Tennessee Department of Education application requirements, timely filing, budget submitted on approved forms, grade structure equivalent to structure of the system, students must reside within Rutherford County, candidate status for SACS accreditation must be received within the first year of operation for 9 through 12 schools, 9 through 12 schools must meet system graduation requirements and provide a curriculum to meet the University of Tennessee Board of Regents and NCAA requirements for Division I schools. Compliance with all state and federal rules regarding nutrition, transportation, bids and purchases, and special education. In our previous form, we noticed that it was on an old form, some of it, and, and certain dates and things weren't there. So we just need to get in our policy that we are complying in all of these areas. And then policy 6.702, student clubs and organization. Purpose of this revision is to distinguish between curricular and non-curricular clubs and provide rules for posting materials and school buildings. Recommend approval, motion to approve the adoption of policy 3.208 and revisions to policies 4.606, 1.404, 1.803, 1.704, and 6.702 on first reading as recommended by the policy committee. Ms. McLeod did share the posting with the high school principals also today, and they do have areas where they're posting, so they were seem to be be okay with that. They understood that. I think the summaries are very good, and uh, I think we should spend the time tomorrow evening to go through those summaries. Sometimes in these policy revisions, we dispense with the reading and such, but I think this presentation is very nice and informative to the public. So. Uh, thank those that put that together. Anybody else? Uh, 14, uh, uh, make sure everybody reads her. I think you got back the information tonight. Uh, read it for tomorrow night. Uh, 15, Mr. Odom. 15, and this is for information to let you know. The Transportation Department was budgeted nine buses for 2013-14. That's nine additional buses. We put on eight buses through October. This brings us to a total fleet of 236 buses. We have exhausted the first priority, second priority, and third priority list for future contractors. We are currently at number 23 out of 63 contractors on the fourth priority list. Buses are traveling a total of 16,544 miles per day which equals to 297,792 miles per month, or 2,977,920 miles per year. This year, we are utilizing the STAR database to track students who ride a bus. STAR is the attendance piece of software, and it's the way we have to report transportation to State Department of Education now, so that's, that's the change. This requires each school to identify those students and input their bus information. This is a change from previous years and the Transportation Department along with the Attendance Department who are working with the schools to get accurate numbers. We are currently showing 20,858 students are assigned to buses we are showing transported each day. At the end of 2012-13 school year, we showed transporting 25,278 students. We have also transported 103 Atlas students, and that's the academic time leads to achieving students. Rutherford County Schools assistance program for families in transition through the end of October compared to 91 in 2012. We've had nine accidents with one injury so far this year compared to five in 2012 with one injury and 10 in 2011 with 15 injuries. All buses are equipped with video surveillance which is used by schools, transportation department, and bus drivers to identify individuals and actions involving misconduct. We pulled 106 videos from buses through the month of October. <clears throat> Mr. Snell actually sent out another report to all principals this afternoon, which was showing by bus from individual schools how many students are being reported through STAR. So um, the afternoon was up to 23,000 and something. I remember seeing that count. So it, it's getting closer, but it's just one of those things we just have to keep working on. Uh, very often, uh, at the start of the year, parents say, well, I'm going to transport my student. I'm going to bring them to school. 
and you get into this traffic jams in the first two or three or four weeks and you decide, hey, maybe that bus doesn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. but, but getting that, but very often they may not tell the office or somebody, hey, I'm now going to be transporting my child so that we can get it coded in the attendance software and get it counted. So that's what we're trying to work through and find where those gaps might be. Mr. Snell, how are the, just talking about cameras and stuff like that, how are they holding up? Uh, pretty good. The, uh, we're probably in a, the third, fourth phase of the of new cameras. The first camera we had when we installed the black cameras. Uh, and then there was the first and second phase of the black cameras. And then there was the first revision of, into a white camera, uh, which does a little better job as far as quality is concerned. And now we have third version of and it is a whole lot better uh, allows us uh, to add another camera uh, another eye we've started doing that because of the, uh, just this year and it enables us to put a camera eye in the middle of the bus we miss so much uh, with things that might happen in the middle of the bus plus as buses have become more and more safe as far as the, the manufacturing of the of their seats, those little kids, you can't see them from, from the camera eye looking straight down uh, from the front of the bus. Uh, those seats are, high, are so high that it you know, keeps them safe, but it also uh, eliminates some of the, the vision that we can have by looking down through them with the camera eye. So we started mounting another camera eye in the middle of the bus, which enables us to look a little bit better at doing that. As far as holding up is concerned, we've lost some of GPS uh, abilities on the old, older cameras, um, and there are no parts to replace them. So we've not replaced that camera as long as the camera video is still working. The GPS may not be working, but the video itself is still working. And um, we're replacing some old cameras of the black kind that parts are not available for anymore. Uh, but they're holding up all about what they said they would. So you've got you've got an ongoing maintenance yeah, item, we, more we or less. You know, gentleman that we we hired uh, with the technology worked for both of us. And whenever we receive a uh, report from a, uh, either myself being on the bus and seeing something wrong, or uh, or contractors see something wrong, the, they're checking the bus each, the cameras each day to make sure all the lights are working on. And if they see something's wrong, they report it. Anybody else? Uh, number 16 is uh, your general reading, I guess. Uh, you got a lot of policies to look over, and like I said before, if you anything catches your eye, uh, get with Ms. McLeod and we'll address it in February. Uh, 17. That's general discussion by board members. Insurance committee update. Oh, okay. That's, you've updated since I loaded. I think Jeff and Paula. Do you want to get? You want it tonight, or you want it tomorrow night? They they had a meeting today. Well, we uh, since Mr. Nipper's not here, if it's agreeable with the board, <coughs> uh, go over it tomorrow night unless uh, any board members object. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Do that tomorrow night. Uh, <coughs> number 18, general discussion. What's got nothing? Everybody good? All right. If there's nothing else, we'll stand adjourned and be here tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. <laughs>